welcome to our online church service. Uh, some fun things today. We have uh, Rebecca Kearney bringing our message. She's part of our church staff and a wonderful communicator of God's Word. We're in the book of 1 Peter. You're going to really enjoy this. Uh, Pastor Mark does a great job bringing our offering and Una with the worship. And uh, I'm Pastor Dwight, lead pastor of Christ the King Vineyard Church, and I get a chance to welcome you to our service. And we are really excited that you're joining us. If you are available on a Sunday morning and you want to join us in our parking lot, you can do that. We park on either side, bring uh, lawn chairs. If you don't have one, we'll provide a chair for you. And we do an outdoor, family-friendly uh, worship service, and that's at 10 o'clock. So those that can make it, we'd love to see you. Uh, God bless you guys. Enjoy the service. Father, thank you, God, for your presence here among us this morning. God, we just want to fall into faith this morning. We want to fall into who you are, fall into your sovereignty, lean into your grace. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to envelop our praises, envelop our presence here as we worship you. God, we invite you into our homes. We invite you into this moment of worship. God, we honor you. Receive the praise that's due your name this morning. We trust in you. And we thank you for the hope that's in you, God. In Jesus' name. Oh, 
it feels like we might be just running around in circles, going after the same things, wondering when he's going to change something. I want you to be encouraged this morning that his promise stands. What he says does not return void. It means it goes out and accomplishes what he sets forth to do because he's a faithful God. What he says he's going to do, he's going to do. And it might not be in our timing, but we can lean and trust into him that he has all of it worked out for the good of those that love him. So let's lean into that this morning. We want to introduce to you another song this morning. It's called Do It Again. I believe that this is a song for our time. The words start off, it says, you know, walking around these walls, and I thought by now that they would fall. But here's the promise. You have not failed me. We're waiting. We're just waiting. We're waiting for change to come. We don't see it, but we know that the battle is won because you have not failed me yet. Chorus says his promise still stands. Great is his faithfulness. And I'm still in his hands. And that's my confidence. So let's sing that this morning. Let's continue to worship him. Let's lean in to the truth of what he says about us and what he says over us this morning. Waiting 
for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet The promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed me yet. I know the night will last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing
Father, thank you for your promises. They're yes and amen. This morning, God, we are sorry for the ways that we have thought that maybe you didn't come through when really you were just showing mercy to us. We always we come to you this morning. We lean once again into the promises of God. Thank you, God, for loving us so deeply, so dearly that you draw near to us and you fill us, you keep us safe, you protect us. God, you give us a hope for the future. God, your promise, it stands. I want to sing this one more time before we go. Promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. I'll never will forget. Yes, God. Jesus' name. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this part of our online service. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have our offering. And before I pray, I just want to read a scripture passage. It's out of uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. It says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Let's pray. Father, we are reminded that you are so much higher than us. You are so much wiser than us. And so things that you are doing, we're not going to fully understand. But you clearly tell us that you freely pardon, that you are God that lavishes your mercy on us. So God, I pray that you give us eyes to see the ways you show your mercy and your grace to us every day. Help us to see in the midst of the storms of life that you are good and that you are working out all things, all things for our good and for our deliverance. Thank you that you're a God who rescues your people. Thank you that you're a God that was willing to suffer for your people. Thank you that you not only forgive us, but that you adopt us in your family as your children. So God, fill us with the hope and the faith that comes from your word and your promises and who you are, who you are as God. Lord, if we look to this world, if we look to our circumstances, we're going to be discouraged. We're going to be filled with doubt. We're going to be confused. It's not going to make sense to us. We pray your Holy Spirit, give us the eyes to see and a heart that believes and trusts in your good work. And we know as we continue reading in this chapter in Isaiah that you have a great kingdom in store for all of us, that you're going to make all things new and make all things right. And you are working your plan. So we give you thanks and praise God for the hope that you give us in Jesus name. Amen. Well, if you are normally with us online, you know uh, there's a number of ways to give as part of our uh, worship offering. Uh, First, you can give online. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, You can go to our website, cdgatechurch.org slash giving, and you can set up a one-time gift or a reoccurring gift. A second way to give is you can text to give. You can text the amount to the number 84321. That's another way. Uh, Third, you can mail in your offering if you prefer. Our address is 30635 Lorraine Road in North Olmsted. 44070, mail in your offering. Uh, There's actually a fourth way is that uh, Sundays at 10 a.m., weather permitting, we have an outdoor service in our parking lot. So you're welcome to come 
if you would like, and uh, we could, we'll also take an offering there if you come to our outdoor service. I want to also let you know that uh, next Sunday, we're going to plan on doing communion both for our online service and for our outdoor service. So if you join us, want to let you know, be prepared, and we can take communion together. So thank you for joining us, and have a great day. birthday month in my family. Uh, this Sunday is my daughter Audrey's 11th birthday and last month was my birthday although 36 doesn't quite have the same feel as 11 because there's not as many balloons it wasn't nearly as fun but my favorite thing I got for my birthday was these beautiful honeysuckle bushes from my sister and I've always wanted honeysuckle bushes because my grandparents had honeysuckle and I have all these memories as a kid in the summer of you know getting out of the pool in our little bathing suits and you know, picking off the blossoms and sucking out the sweet honey. And it was just like this really nice memory. And I wanted that for my kids. And my sister knew that, so she bought me these bushes. So every night, as part of kind of like my evening ritual, it kind of helps me wind down from the day, I get my little hose out and I water my bushes and I water all the other plants because, you know, this quarantine, all we have to do is garden, right? So we're growing all the things in our house. But um, so I'm out there one evening a couple weeks ago and my daughter was with me because she kind of wanted some one-on-one -on -one mom time and I was watering these bushes. And when we initially got them, they had all the blossoms on them and they smelled so good from our patio. We just smelled them every time the wind even just moved a little bit. But these bushes have been growing and they're really healthy and green and nice looking, but they don't have blossoms on them. And so um, we're watering and my daughter looked at me and she's like, mom, where are all the flowers? And I just kind of immediately said, well, the plant is working so hard at establishing its new root system in an unfamiliar environment that's taking all the energy that usually is used toward blossoming. And as soon as those words left my mouth, I felt like God said, yeah, that is where we are right now. Where we are right now is that we're not blossoming in our typical way, right? Like summer is usually when we go on family vacation, we go camping, we do, you know, beaches and water parks and all that stuff that feels like blossoming, that feels like fun, that feels like thriving. But right now, Thriving looks like establishing ourselves in healthy ways in the place where we are. And so the sermon series we're talking about right now is peace over panic. And what we're trying to figure out is what does it look like to live like the people of God in the middle of this environment that can feel like chaos, that can feel like stress, that can feel like fear, that can feel like dissension. And Peter talks about that kind of environment in 1st and 2nd Peter, and he does it because they were undergoing a very similar situation, although for different reasons. So for them, um, you know, we talked about the last couple of weeks, but, you know, these were people who were either Jesus followers who've kind of followed him, or there were people who had found Jesus. But either way, before this kind of time, they were living in a society where they fit in very nice and neatly. You know, they had their homes, they had their businesses, they had the way that they worshiped, they had the people they interacted with. And then they were driven from their homes, they became exiles, and they were scattered throughout the empire, and they had to relearn what does it mean to thrive. And so um, even though they're kind of different, different situations, it's the same core principle. Who are we 
during this season? And what is God calling us to? So let's read the passage. We're going to read from um, 1 Peter chapter 1. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Let's pray for a second. God, we just ask that as we hear your word, as we talk about what it is to live in a time of pandemic, a time of international difficulty, that we would hear your will and your word for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So one of the questions that we ask ourselves during this time, and I think everyone's asking, is what does it look like to be the people of God in the middle of all of this? Verse 5 talks about that. It says, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So if you're familiar with the Bible, you might recognize this kind of ongoing theme of being a spiritual house or being a temple. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, Paul says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Okay, so both Peter and Paul both use the same kind of illustration to talk about what does it look like to be Jesus followers, spiritual house, a temple, but what does that mean? What does it look like for us? So it reminds me of um, when I was living in India. My husband and daughter and I lived in India for three years, and I remember this one day, it was at the beginning of our stay there, and I was going through a lot of culture shock because everything there is different from here. Like the food is different, the smells are different, the way people interact with each other is different, kind of the expectations are different, you know, the way women are there can be different, and so it, it felt like a lot this day. And it was the day that they were giving us the tour of the city, and it was a walking tour. And walking tours are a good time because it really is the best kind of way to get to know the city. But on this particular day, it was just so hot. So we're walking through the city and the city that we were living in, we were living in Chennai, was super loud. You know, it's a really big kind of major, um, major city center. So it was loud and imagine we're kind of walking down the street and there's all these bus horns and car exhaust and it's just stinky from the car exhaust and it's so hot that I'm like sticky everywhere and all the dust is being kicked up from our feet and it's just getting all over so I'm gritty and hot and tired and I'm lonely and I'm missing everything that I've ever known before and I'm not sure how am I going to learn how to be a mom here? How am I going to learn how to be a wife in this environment? Like, what does this even look like? But the last stop of our tour was this old church, and it was built in the 1600s and then rebuilt the end of the 1800s. So we, we come up to this, to this big kind of cathedral thing. It's hewn out of stone, and um, there are big carved oak doors, and we pull open these big oak doors, and we step inside, and behind us is this like humid, sticky, hot, confusing, traffic, loud, noisy place. But when we walk in, it's dim. There's candles flickering at the front. It's quiet. 
because the stone has insulated it from all of the noise outside. And you can feel the prayers of the faithful that have been going on for hundreds of years in this place. When the doors kind of clanged behind us, we found ourselves in this environment that made our souls just It's like total refreshment, total um, encounter. Like immediately my spirit just, you know, found itself naturally connecting with God. And so when we're talking about our lives and us as Jesus followers being temples of the Holy Spirit, what we're saying is we're not just housing God, you know, and his spirit where we go. What we're saying is that we are called to be living, moving sanctuaries of refreshment and encounter. That where we go, we bring that. That when people come into our homes, they feel peace. When they look into our eyes, they feel that we are present for them because we are creating sanctuary in the middle of all of this crazy. That in a world that's, that's isolating and confusing and loud, that we can be the people of refreshment. When we say we are temples of the Holy Spirit, we say that that's not just for us, that we're temples of the Holy Spirit for other people. So what does that look like? What does it look like to be a temple of the Holy Spirit to be someone who is, you know, um, created for refreshment for others, for peace for others, to be a place of encounter. And that's actually in the second part of verse five. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So we are temples of the Holy Spirit. And, and back then, temples would be places like way back that they would make sacrifices, right? They would kind of um, bring the first fruits or they would bring, you know, um, like way back, you know, like a, an animal to be kind of slaughtered. And obviously that wasn't what Peter was talking about. And it's certainly not what we're talking about because that would be really awkward. What it means is sacrifice is a part of being a Jesus follower. Sacrifice is kind of so ingrained into our identity that we're modeled after places where sacrifice would happen. So what kind of sacrifices would we be making? Like what would be an appropriate thing? Well, there's sacrifices of our time, right? Acknowledging that our time isn't our own. That when we give our lives to Jesus, what we say is, God, here is my life. Do with it however you see fit. Use me to be that sanctuary for other people. Use me to bring the kingdom of God to bear in the places where I'm planted. And so we sacrifice our time because we realize as Jesus followers that our time doesn't belong to us. Like where I might wanna sit on my patio and just have like a chill time, my neighbor might need a conversation with somebody who can bring the Holy Spirit and his love and his care into what she's going through right now. And that is my responsibility, and that is my honor and pleasure as a Jesus follower. Another thing that we sacrifice is we sacrifice our resources. And that's not just money, although it is money too, right? So when we're, you know, sacrificing to the Lord, when we're, you know, living our lives after the ways of God, we have to recognize that our finances aren't our own. We have to recognize that when we're setting up our financial goals for the year, we have to build in generosity. That was something actually we did this year. For the first time, we're being like really intentional with our finances and we're, you know, whatever, being very grown up about things. And uh, so we're, you know, coming up with our financial goals. You know, we wanna pay down student loans, which if you have them, you know, that's a goal. Uh, you know, we're paying down student loans. We wanna, you know, set aside money to replace a vehicle when it dies. But we also decided that as Jesus followers, we need to, to build in a goal to be more financially generous. To say like, okay, let's look out this year for maybe two or three times that we can be radically generous to somebody else, to a family in need, or, 
you know, that we can use our funds for the glory of God, that it's not just our lives that are sacrificed unto the Lord, but God is the God of our bank accounts. God is the God of the resources we have. And our resources are also our homes, right? I mean, people need places where they can have community. You know, we're talking about small groups, you know, whenever we come back and when we figure out kind of how to do things in person a little bit more, we're not hosting small groups or whatever because it's just a good idea that people tell you to do. We host small groups because we realize that our home is a place that can be used for others. It's a place that we sacrifice to say, Jesus, what can you do with what I'm giving you? Because we know that what God can do with the small things we give him is more than we can imagine. God can take our home and create a respite for someone in need. God can take our home and maybe create community for someone who has felt so isolated that they're on their last chance right now. God can take maybe the 50 bucks we slip to someone without them knowing, and maybe that's the thing that can remind them that there is good in this world, and this world is somewhere that they can continue to be. You know, we don't know what God can do with the things that we offer, but we know that he is faithful. And we know that when we sacrifice to God, we're not sacrificing because we're good people. We're sacrificing because that is in the very nature of being a Jesus follower. So why are we doing this? Why are we doing this hard stuff? Verse 6 says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Guys, we're not sacrificing and you know creating lives that are open doored for other people just because it's kind of written in the book or you know because we want God to do something cool with it and we're kind of hoping for that. We're doing this because our entire lives are built on the cornerstone that is Jesus Christ. That it is the very foundation of who we are. Like we are temples. Temples have open doors. We are places of refreshment. And all of that is true because we're built on the foundation of what Jesus did for us. That the ultimate sacrifice was Jesus dying on the cross for us. That the ultimate act of love is every day when Jesus shows up for us. The fact that when we build our lives on the cornerstone that is him and his word and his love, that we will never be put to shame. Now I know when you're watching this and you know listening maybe or whatever, there's always the thing where we say, yeah, but, yeah, but I'm not really a temple. Like, I'm barely hanging on to shack status these days, right? Like, I, I can't do this. Like, I'm barely, barely hanging on, right? Like, I attended Zoom meetings ad nauseum in the spring. I, like, homeschooled, virtual schooled my kids for all this time. I got, like, laid off from my job and then brought back. And then I, I stayed on the phone with unemployment for, like, week after week after week. I am, like, barely hanging on to faith. I'm barely hanging on to life. I'm barely hanging on to anything. And if that's you, I'm saying like, me too. Me too. I'm not like out watering the plants because it's so sweet. I'm out watering the plants because sometimes I need a minute to take a breath and reconnect with Jesus. Let's take a look at verse four. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. So this verse is talking about Jesus, but it's talking about us too. Rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. Sometimes it feels like, you know, we're not a temple we're not in anything. We're just like a guy or girl trying to do a good job, trying to be a good parent, trying to be a good friend. But we forget one thing. That we're not just a temple. We're not just a body. That we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is living in us. And that Holy Spirit is 
holding us up. And that Holy Spirit is empowering us to do the things that God has asked us to do. We can't sacrifice and take care of people and do all this stuff on our own. No way. But God can. The God who sees us, the God who made us, the God who laid down his life for us, the God who adores every fiber of our being can do this work in us, through us, and in spite of us. God says, you're a temple because I made you a temple. You're a temple because I built you. He is our architect, right? He designed how we work. He knows how our minds work. He knows that as an introvert, if I don't get some quiet some days, I am not going to be nice, right? He knows that as an extrovert, you might be like, if I can't see people, I can't recharge and I can't live like that. He knows. He knows our needs. He made us. He designed us. And he designed us well. Just like any other building, sometimes we fall into disrepair. Sometimes the plumbing is backed up, the roof is leaking, the paint's peeling. And that is okay. Because the builder of our bodies, of our minds, of our spirit, is the Lord who loves us who lays himself down for us, who shores us up, and he is able to do maintenance. But what we do when we see this kind of, you know, disrepair in our lives is we take it back to the builder and we say, God, I need you to build me back up from the inside. God, I need you to be with me in a way that I can feel you. God, I am not doing okay, and you're the only one who can save me. You're the only one who can fix me. Do me a favor. We're going to close with this, but I'm going to read verse 9. And as I do, can you just close your eyes for a second? Let me read this over you, this promise of God, this, this um, word that he has, not just for the whole world, but today it's for you. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Friends, we have received mercy for this time in our lives, for this season. And it's not just for ourselves. It's mercy for other people. That This gift that's been given to us has been given for us to share. So when we, as we pray, let's pray that the Lord who builds us up from the inside will give us the strength to keep the doors of our lives open for people in need. Lord, I thank you for who you are. And I thank you that you are the God who sees us and the God who cares about every detail of our lives. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would meet us here in this place, that you would meet our needs, and that you would help us to connect with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let me give you a blessing. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace, not just for you, for the world around you. Have a great week. God bless. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for our Sunday morning worship service. Uh, we pray that God spoke to you, that you were able to enjoy him and enjoy his presence. Uh, those that want to support the ministry, we have a few ways you can do that. You can text to give 84321 and that'll set up a way to give via text. You can go to our website, uh, ct church.org slash giving that'll another way you can give and of course you can always mail in a check to uh, Christ the King Vineyard Church 30635 Lorraine Road North Olmstead Ohio God bless you guys we will see you next week either outdoors or online have a great day